Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another lesson from the Cloud Practitioner Express. And in this new series, we're going to start a completely new topic, and this is databases on AWS Cloud. And with this, let's start with the first type of databases, and this is what we call AWS relational databases. So from the high level, I can divide databases into mainly two types. The first type is what we call relational, and the second type is what we call non-relational. So in this video, we're going to cover the relational databases and the multiple offerings, and in the next one, we're going to see the non-relational databases. But from the high level, when we talk about relational databases, from the name you can understand, relational database means I have a certain relation between the multiple tables that I have inside my database. And then, as you can see, the table that I have in my relational database has a fixed or a strict schema that I need to follow in order to fill in the entries that I have inside my relational database. So if I want to explain it from the high level, relational databases means what? Means I have a relational database where data is stored in a way that has a certain relation between the multiple tables, as I mentioned, inside my database. And then in order for me to query my database, there is this language. I believe you might heard about this term before, which is what we call the SQL or the structured query language. And as I mentioned in my previous example, in the relational databases, usually we have a fixed and a strict schema that we need to follow. Now, let's see the offering from AWS, which is a very special offering called Amazon RDS. So let's see it in details. Yes. So let's start. I am on premise. I have my physical data center and I have my instance. So I am on premise and this is where I deal with my physical servers and inside this physical server this is where I have my database virtual machine. So this virtual machine definitely as an operating system. So we have this person called my database administrator. This is the one responsible to build this virtual machine. And this is the one responsible to make sure this operating system is always patched to make sure that the database is not vulnerable. And this is the person who will deploy the database engine. So let's see what are the tasks. What are the responsibilities of the database administrator? First of all, I am inside the physical data center. So in a way or another, I still manage my physical servers. And then I need to patch my virtual machine operating system. And then, of course, I don't have only one database instance because it fails. I completely lost my transactions. So this person needs to handle the high availability, which means creating two instances of databases and making sure that there is synchronization between these two instances. And then what about storage scalability? In case I have lots of transactions coming into my database, I might run out of storage. So this person in conjunction with the storage administrator, they need to handle the storage scalability and finally i always need to handle the backups so i need to have a backup of my database this is what do i have on premise and these are the tasks of this person on premise now let's explore how i can migrate into the cloud and in aws so the first option of migrating my database from on-premise to the cloud, the first option is called self-manage. 
So in the self manager you're going to see, it's very similar to what I did in the on-premise. This is where I will need to provision my virtual server. And in this case, it's called my EC2 instances. So my database administrator will provision this EC2 instance. We'll make sure I have this operating system to always patch the operating system and again to install the database engine. So what are the tasks needed from the database administrator? You're going to see it's more or less like what we discussed here, of course, without the physical server. So again, this person needs to handle my OS patches, needs to handle my high availability, creating an active database and a standby, needs to handle my storage scalability as well. In case I'm running out of storage, how can we scale the storage in coordination with the storage administrator? And of course, need to have backups. So that's the first option. Now, let's introduce the third and very interesting last option, which is what we call the fully managed. Or in other terms, this is exactly the Amazon audience. All right, so at the end of the day, what do I need? At the end of the day, I need a database engine. So in the RDS, you go through a wizard, where you go through simple clicks, one of these clicks, you choose which database engine you would like to have, along with some other parameters I'm going to explain. And at the end of the wizard, you are going to see AWS is going to automatically auto-provision this EC2 instance completely on your behalf. So you don't need to provision this instance. And since you don't provision the instance, so of course, you don't operate and you don't patch the operating system, AWS will be the one responsible to patch the operating system here. So let's see what are now the tasks of this database administrator. So RDS is going to do the operating system patching. And for the high availability, you can just choose a click of a button where this is going to be multi AZ, which means now AWS is going to provision two instances, one active instance in an availability zone, another standby instance in a second availability zone, and it's going to configure between them synchronous replication, and they're going to have the same endpoint. So your application is pointing and writing on this endpoint. If the active database fails, automatically the standby database takes over with seamlessly or without any downtime. And what about storage? You can also choose an option of auto storage scalability which means the more your database needs storage, the more AWS will provision this storage. You don't need to go and manually change anything in your database. And finally, you can also configure this to do automated backups. So as you can see here in the RDS or in the fully managed option, now as you can see, most of the tasks that this person, the database administrator, used to do either on premise or even in the cloud when he was doing a self-managed now these tasks are going to be completely eliminated so now this person can focus more on innovation can focus more on the database can focus more on how he can work on his queries enhance the queries enhance the application performance Very good. Now, after the explanation, let's see the properties of the Amazon RDS. First of all, Amazon RDS, as we explained in the previous example, this is a fully managed service that operates and scales a relational database in the cloud. And number two, which is very important, the RDS is automating the time consuming admin tasks. Like for example, if you remember, AWS will auto-create for you the EC2 instance. AWS will auto-create 
the database engine inside this EC2 instance, AWS will be responsible to patch the operating system inside this EC2 instance. And also, if you are choosing a multi-AZ, AWS will create a minimum of a primary and secondary database will configure in between the synchronous replication between these two database tables. So you don't need to go through all the admin tasks of creating an EC2 instance or provisioning an EC2 instance and then configuring the database engine that you have. Make sure that you patch the operating system. All of these are going to be completely automated from, uh, from your side. And then RDS is industry compliant. So it's allowing data encryption at rest and in transit. We're going to see this in the coming videos when we talk about security, but from the high level, when I want to secure the transmission of my data, this is what I call encryption in transit. And when I want to secure where my data is not moving, this is what we call encryption at rest. We're going to see this in a coming future video. And then what are the options? What are the engines, the offerings that RDS is offering? Let's see. So these are the options that we have. And if you are familiar with databases, if you have maybe a little bit background about databases, for sure, you know the last two. So for sure, you heard about Oracle databases and about Microsoft SQL. So Oracle databases and Microsoft SQL, these are the enterprise grade databases. They are, of course, uh, the fastest when it comes to the performance perspective. It's enterprise grade performance, but at the same time, from a cost perspective, they are very expensive. And that's why some organization, they might sacrifice the performance if they cannot pay that premium amount of cost. They might say, you know what? Let's sacrifice the performance in order to pay a little bit less. And that's why they might go for open databases like Postgres, MySQL, and MariaDB. And because of this at AWS, AWS created Amazon Aurora and Amazon Aurora is a very special database offering because it combines the best of both worlds. So Amazon Aurora, this is an enterprise grade database, but at the same time, it's a very cost effective database. And from Amazon Aurora, we have two options. We have Amazon Aurora that is backward compatible with Postgres which is three times faster than Postgres and another option of Amazon Aurora, which is backward compatible with MySQL and also is five times faster than the normal MySQL database offering that we have. Let's see some interesting facts about, uh, about Amazon Aurora. First of all, and the first interesting fact, Amazon Aurora, it's the fastest growing service ever in the history of AWS. So you can really understand how customers and organizations are understanding right now the benefit of having something like uh, Aurora RDS. And number two, as we mentioned, RDS Aurora is an enterprise class relational database. So from performance perspective, Aurora is offering an enterprise grade database. And from a durability perspective, Aurora replicates six copies of data across three availability zones, which means that I have two copies of my database inside each availability zone having six, and I can even go beyond this and can have up to 15 copies of Amazon Aurora across my region in order to offer the highest durability uh, possible. With this, we have finished the first part of the AWS relational database offerings. I hope the concept now is clear. In the next video, we are going to start with the non-relational databases. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, please put it for us in the comment section in the video. Thank you so much.